In this video, I'll show you how to get a C-sharp application to communicate with an ESP32, ESP32CAM, or ESP8266 using the MQ Telemetry Transport Protocol, or MQTT for short. This is a lightweight Internet of Things protocol, and it's supported by both C-sharp and the ESP32. Because it uses a standard Wi-Fi connection, there doesn't need to be a physical cable connection between the PC and the microcontroller device. There are three parts to this video. MQTT is a client server model, so we need to get a test client and a test server up and running. In part three, I'll run through the annoying problems I had while trying to get it to work. First up, let's set up the MQTT server. You might think the ESP32 would be the server because we want to connect to it and retrieve sensor data. In fact, it's better to make the PC the server. This is because it's much easier to get microcontrollers working as a client. So we'll make the PC the server. Basically, this involves setting up a TCP service that will listen on port 1883. So to build the server in C Sharp, we need to open Visual Studio and select a new project. We'll select this one, the ASP.NET Core Empty project. Click on Next. So we'll give the project a name. Click on Next. And we'll use .NET 8. And let's create it. So this is our empty web application. So now we need to right click on the project and go to manage NuGet packages. And click on browse. And we need to search for MQTT. Right, so the one we need is this one. There should be a .NET Core one. So we need to install this one, mqttnet.aspnetcore and it's the one with the red icon. So I'll install that one. It does also need the regular MQTT net package as well, but it should have installed that one as well. And I've now got an update where it puts it in as a transitive package. So this depends on this, so it will install them both. The next task is to go to the MQTT net GitHub repository, and I've linked to this in the description below. So you need to go to code and then download zip. So when you've unzipped the file, you need to go into MQTT net master and then the samples directory, and then there is a server directory within that. And the file we want is the server asp.net samples here. It's not immediately obvious, but this does actually contain .NET core code. So if you open this in a text editor, all you have to do here is select all, copy this code. So we'll paste it into a new class file. So right click on the project, go to add class. We'll call it MQTT server. and delete the existing code and then paste in the code from the sample. So to get this running, we now need to go to the program.cs. We'll comment out what's already there. So basically in program.cs, we just need to call this method here, start server with WebSocket support. So we just put in a call to it here and it should automatically put the namespace in and that's basically all that we need for our server. So we'll start up the server now. So you might get a Windows firewall window up here. So click that it's OK to use it on networks and allow access. So you'll see that in the command window here, it just says that it's listening and it's listening on port 1883. So this basically is our server. All we have to do now is to build a client. So you need to open the Arduino IDE and the first thing we'll do is to install a library. So go to tools and then manage libraries. And the library we want is called pub sub client. So it's this one, I've already installed it. So it's pub sub client by Nick O'Leary. So make sure you install that one. 
So the client code is on my website and I put a link to it in the description below. So I basically glued two examples together. The first one is examples, pub sub client, and then the MQTT ESP8266. So I've basically taken the existing example for the ESP8266 and copied in some Wi-Fi connection code from Wi-Fi client basic in the Wi-Fi projects. So to get this working, you basically need to download it from my website. In the SSID here, you need to put the network ID of your own Wi-Fi network. Obviously put the password in this text field here. And the MQTT server, you need to put the IP address of your actual desktop PC or laptop, the one that is running the C Sharp server. So don't put in localhost because that's not where it's running. Incidentally, there is a setup method down at the bottom. And if your MQTT server is not running on port 1883, then you'll have to change that. So before I upload the sketch and test it out, I'll just put a breakpoint into the onClientConnected method in the server code. So if the ESP32 connects, then it should hit this breakpoint here. I'll now upload the sketch. So go to sketch and then upload and probably have to hold down the reset button on the ESP32 while it's doing so. Remember to connect the programming loop between ground and input zero on the ESP32 while it's uploading. Okay, so it's uploading the sketch. So now disconnect the programming loop and press the reset button on the ESP32. Okay, so now it says I'm connected to the network and yes, so it's hit the breakpoint. So it has actually communicated over the Wi-Fi network. And if we press continue, we should see that it's sending hello world to the server. So on the console, we can see that the client has connected to the server. So that's pretty much all you need to do to get them connected. In the next section, I'll go through a bit of troubleshooting for some of the common problems that you might encounter with this. So an issue you might find is that Windows Defender Firewall is blocking the port 1883. So you need to add a new rule for this. So if you go to right click on inbound rules, right click and set new rule, and you need to change this to port, click on next, and add in port 1883 here, and it's on TCP. So I've already set that one up. You also need to set an outbound one as well. Depending on your network as well, you might have to log into your router and open up port 1883. So if you want to access your server remotely, then you almost certainly will need to open the port in your own router. So something that got me very confused is that the MQTT server doesn't, of course, run on 127.0.0.1, i.e. the local host that you might be used to if you make a lot of web applications. It actually runs on your PC's own IP address. So to find your computer's IP address, open a command prompt and type ipconfig. And if we scroll up, we'll see that the IP4 address here is this. So this is the IP address that your server will be running on. So this is what has to go into the Arduino sketch. So if you want to do a lot of MQTT development, then I can really recommend this application called MQTTX. I'll put a link to it in the description. So this is a Windows application and we'll install it now. So basically, it's a bit like Postman is used for testing web applications using JSON. So we'll start it up and we can use localhost. And I think it's on the right port already. So if we connect, then you see it hits the breakpoint. So this is a really nice tool for testing things, especially if you're building something a bit more complicated. It also means that you can test MQTT without actually having an Internet of Things microcontroller. If you want to test your MQTT server on another device and you have an Android phone, then you can use this application called MyMQTT. 
So you need to install it to your Android phone. There are probably equivalents you can also install on an iPhone. So that's basically all you need to do to get C Sharp connected up to Internet of Things devices. Hope you found this video useful. I'll try and make some more videos about MQTT, so check the playlist which I'll set up. Thanks for watching!